Uh, hello scrappers and today I thought I'd uh, go ahead and break down one of these uh, air conditioner fan motors and yeah, let's see what I need here this thing's got here on the aluminum ends it's got two little ports where you can oil it from time to time these things here just pull out. Yeah, normally the other one pulled out real easy. This one's gonna play hard to get I guess. Well, let me see if I can get a hold of it with the pliers and do it that way. Give it a, there it is, come right out. So, not too shabby. And I will check them with a magnet. Yeah, it's aluminum. I probably could have left. It's aluminum, so I probably could have left them in, except they're they're actually sheet aluminum. I'll throw them in the bucket over there on the bucket shelf. So that's actually sheet aluminum, and the ends are cast. So got the pliers here because sometimes these nuts over here want to spin, like that time right now. So I just get a hold of that. Nut. With the pliers, or you can get a small wrench on there, whichever you prefer. These are usually easy to break down, and we get some of that copper, yeah, that orange gold. I haven't checked prices lately. Hopefully, copper's still holding steady, but. I don't know, the market we're in is just kind of touch and go, really. Not sure. Kind of goes up a little bit, goes down a little bit, but... Nothing spectacular. And a lot of times you can either knock these out or just uh, hit the shaft and drive them through. Then it gets stuck halfway. I guess it just doesn't want to come out of this end. I'm going to toss these in the bucket. Shred bucket. Always got to be something, huh? Okay, there's that end. We'll do it that way. And then I made a little special tool. Let me pan up a little bit. See. Yeah, you might be able to see it now. And sometimes I can just drop these. Other times. Have to get the hammer and punch. And I'll throw those in the short iron. Speaking of short iron, I'm after I get done with this making this video, I'm gonna go hook up the dump trailer and back it up to the short iron pile. And load up a load of short iron. It's been over a year since I've taken a load in. Pile is getting pretty big. Prices aren't the best, but it is what it is. Okay, now to make it easier to get get in here and cut the copper out on each side because they're both inset, I'll take my uh, angle grinder and just make a cut right across. So if you have earbuds in, go ahead and turn your volume down real quick. Here we go. That usually doesn't take a lot. So now we have a little bit of shred here. 
And I'll, just, I'll set that back here on the on that stool. Get rid of the punch. And let's see, I need my trusty little knife with the, the hook blade. I like that because I can get up underneath the strings and cut the strings. A lot of time you drag the regular box blade knife against the copper and it just kind of wears out the dulls the tip of the blade. And I just cut these little wires here. Now that one there has still got to go a little further. It's got a little not sure what that little thing is called. To me it really doesn't matter. I just cut it cut it off, throw it in the shred, shred bucket. It's metal. Something probably to help start the, the motor up. Okay, got all those, and I just throw this in my insulated wire bucket. And now we're about ready to take and uh, cut this off with the angle grinder. And I, don't, I may have enough blade there to cut through. If not, I'll swap over and put a new blade on. But just because I swap over and put a new blade on doesn't mean a whole lot because uh, I still will go back and use that smaller piece for cutting stuff up. Now on these, a lot of times I'll put them in the vise where it gives a good secure hold. I've got my little pry, pry bar. Pry it down, that pops up. And then I usually just take a just take a regular screwdriver and get this stuff out. This is just kind of like a cloth material that they put in there that they impregnate it with oil and that helps to uh, keep the shaft oiled up. And then I'll, I got rid of the punch already but I'll bring it back because we got a little steel bushing in there. Set that on the edge. Getting the thing started is kind of the worst part. Then once you get it going down a little bit, hold the punch over to the edge. Sometimes you may have to rotate it a little bit. There it popped out. Little piece right there. Shred bucket. And then uh, and we still have this little cap right here. And what I'm gonna to try to do with it, I get another different punch. I think that one, uh, yeah, that'll fit in the spot. And that, clean that up nicely. So that's clean cast aluminum. Now this one's already partially out. all the work we're having to do to get it started to get it knocked off from the motor let's see if I can knock that there we go, that came off now
pushing out. That's nice and clean. I'll set that over here for now. Get rid of this little bit of shred. And we'll get the workbench cleaned off. I'll fire up the air compressor and we'll get ready for the, to chisel. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and, since I've cut most of the strings on this side, I'm going to go ahead and cut it on this side. That way the strings kind of hold the copper together so it doesn't fly everywhere. I guess there just wasn't enough left on that blade to go all the way through, so I'll go ahead and swap that blade out real quick. Yeah, even so, this is a previously used blade also. I cut it to cut the windings off a of motor had aluminum windings. Well, I tell you, looks like I was so close. Okay, now. As you can see right along this edge, we got those little pieces of plastic from our, our little sleeves. So now these are, look like they're going to come off pretty easy. Try to get all them off before I break this piece down anymore. Sometimes I have to get a little pointed tool, a little pick or something to get in there and get a hold of them. If they're stuck on, they're pretty good. Now I like to look around the inside too, because sometimes it's like little cap pieces of, you know, pieces that come up from the other side. Okay, and now, the way I usually do this is with a air chisel. And I can get some of the strings out of the way. Probably go ahead and cut the rest of the strings real quick. It does make it a bit easier. Either that, or if I leave the strings all on there, then I sometimes I get the whole piece out in one piece and then cut it apart. But sometimes they hold tight, and it could be a bit of difficulty getting it out of there. And if you're prying it by hand, definitely cut all the strings and it makes it a lot easier to get the individual sections out. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing good out there. Yeah, my neighbor, he's a scrapper too. He come over the other day pulling a utility trailer, 16 footer. All the tires are flat. Deck was mostly rotted out. He's asking me what I thought it was worth. I said, well, if you had halfway decent tires that were aired up and a deck on it, it'd probably be worth close to 2,000. <coughs> I said, but uh, the way it is, I say I, I, I'd say it's worth at least five hundred. I asked him if he's buying or selling. I guess he picked it up for free. So I said, nah, that's a good price. I said, uh, yeah, get some tires on there, and then I told him on the deck. Cause I, years ago, when I first got my first sixteen footer, I, I got two by twelves, pressure treated lumber, and man, it was kind of expensive. <coughs> a lot more than I really wanted to pay, but uh, I told him to go with two by six. 
even if he's using it, even if he's pulling cars up on it, two by six would be plenty strong, especially for most of these small cars nowadays. Even a truck, it, you know, the two by six will hold hold just fine. <coughs> and I showed him how to go about doing it. I told him just figure out how many two by sixes you need and buy a couple here, buy a couple there till you get what, get it, you know. Uh, so no telling where he's at on that, but yeah, he got a good deal. Okay, so here, well, let me uh, let me get a bucket. Get a bucket to throw this in. Now on this, with these little fine strings, some yards depends on who they sell to. I guess I hold it down here where you can see it. With these little fine strings on there. Some yards they sell to may not object to the strings. So some places you can take it in. I saw a video where a guy had a, a, a pallet with a Gaylord box on it, and they were just they were dumping it. And you know they all had all were still together like this. So I'm sure they all had strings on them. And uh, of course, metal check where I take it. If you try to sell this to them with strings, they'll, they'll pay you insulated copper prices. And uh, you know, and that's not right. There's just so much, you know, there's so little string on there. That's crazy. You know, it doesn't. I, I could take my propane torch and burn that off, and you know, those strings off in a, a cup, a minute or two. Sometimes you can just you know, hammer these down and get them loosened up. You know, in fact, I can do that right now. If they're, if they're pretty heavy on the shellac, which cutting the one side was pretty easy, so this side might be just as easy. Sometimes they're harder, but it doesn't take that much to get them off. And there's another yard, I think it's Al's Recycling. I asked them about the strings, and they said they were no, not a problem. So, but they don't pay quite as good. But I'd rather take a, a few cent hit per pound, five ten cents less per pound, and be able to do you know put strings and all in there than pay for insulated get it paid for insulated copper price. Yeah. So just check your you know ask your yard. Most yards don't mind you asking. They'll they're glad to help you know how to prepare your metals. Because that that saves them time. If, if you can, you know, prepare it the way their customer wants it, you take it to them. They don't have to do anything with it. Just dump it in the box and go. So they don't have to pay somebody to you know, take the time to clean it. That's why I like using air chiller because these come off most of the time just really nice and easy. Of course, then you got to watch for your little plastic sleeves. Sometimes they like to follow them on out. I just kind of go around and get the outer layer. Or whatever's coming out. If the inner layer comes out with it, that's alright. Looking for them plastic sleeves. Get a couple here. Pretty clean. Yeah, these inner ones are coming right out nope, without a pry bar or anything. Just give them a little tug. Now, if you don't have an air hammer, but say you have a metal rod around, if you have some way to heat it, you can flatten it down and then cut you a V in it. And then you can always hook it on there and put this part in a vise put your rod on there and then hit it with a hammer that will work too in fact that's where I got this idea I don't remember what scrapper it was but he had a video where he made a, a rod like that and he was using it of course, immediately I thought, I thought why wouldn't that work with an air chisel when I first started doing these <laughs> about 30 years or so ago I would I would uh, cut these out with a flat chisel. When the whole thing was whole, I would get inside here and flat chisel everything. And a lot of times, you know, some of these layers would come out, and you know, sometimes it made a mess. Sometimes it came out pretty good, but it was it was a bit slower. You didn't get any copper dust laying around or anything, because pretty much you're just cutting 
you know, shearing the copper off the one side, you know, and then pry it out from the other side. And that's ready for short iron or prepared steel. So I'll throw that in my bucket over here. And then when I start loading the trailer later today, which today, for, today as I'm making this is Saturday. So I called Wash Top Pipe and Steel, and I think they said they're paying 140, 120. So I guess 140 if it's nice, clean, prepared stuff, and 120 if it's kind of a lower grade or something like that. So. And I figure I got four, maybe five ton out there. And uh, so I'm looking at, I'm hoping about a $600 load. I'm going to get on eBay and order some tools and uh, about $70 worth of stuff, a few tools. Uh, One's a meter for checking capacitors or uh, the condensers. Which condensers, basic condenser that we used in the old days for, for tune-ups that go with the points. They're basically a capacitor. So this will test them to see if it's any good. Because for that little 3.9 outboard. They, on eBay, and it's, I can't find. There's a couple different parts sites, and they're they're out of inventory on them. And eBay, they're wanting about thirty dollars plus close to five dollars shipping, so about thirty-five dollars a pop. So, in the testers, about thirty dollars, thirty thirty-five. So I thought, really, I need to get the tester. And then, if the condenser's any is condenser's good, you know, just let it be and just change the points. You know, like the old saying, "If it works, don't fix it." You know. So if the capacitor is good, just go with it. You know. Or I guess the, the saying nowadays is "send it." Yeah. You know? I'm not sure when that phase phrase started or got it going, but I've been seeing it a lot lately on this Facebook John Boat group. So I'm kind of anxious to get that outboards up and running. I've, I'm tempted to. In a day or two, when I get some of this stuff caught up around here, get that trailer, that load out of here, because I know that's going to, I plan two days to load that. I start loading it today, finish loading it tomorrow, then haul it in Monday. So, I'm getting old, and I'm sure that's going to wear me out pretty good, throwing, you know, throwing all that metal, four tons of metal. So I don't, I don't figure I'm going to do the four tons in a couple hours. Figure a couple hours I might get a couple ton of it on there. And then I figure my arms are gonna be sore. And there's a few pieces on there I'll be I'd do good probably to pick up. So I'll probably just have to push them to the side and then put them in the bucket of the tractor. But I got a nice little breeze blowing in, so that, that helps. I think it's a lot nicer out there right now than it was a couple months ago. I've been getting a little bit done here in the shop. Except yesterday I was sitting in the emergency room with the wife again on that one issue she's got. They gave her some different antibiotics and she's got to get a hold of a specialist Monday. Set up an appointment. And uh, I think the specialist is a guy she was doctor she was seeing before COVID hit and she was supposed to go in for a colonoscopy but they gave her that delicious drink and everything else that she's supposed to take to get herself cleaned out and everything and but uh, 
Yeah, my wife does need your prayers, so for those of you that pray, remember her. Last two months, she's been having this this issue, and every time she eats, and she can't hardly eat anything, can't drink much of anything without hurting it down in her stomach and stuff. And I think she's in the last two months. I think she's lost about 50 pounds. And she's hung, hungry, which I can understand that if she can't eat nothing and she's afraid to eat anything. She'll get some cream of chick, uh, cream of chick noodles, chicken noodle soup. She'll pour the broth off and eat, drink the broth, and then give me the noodles. Which at the hospital yesterday they told her to try to eat stuff that's really low in fiber. So she's doing a little better today. I think she ate a little ice cream last night and that, that caused her a little bit of pain. She says she's tired of hurting all the time and tired of pills. That doctor had her on one antibiotic here a week ago. It's supposed to take take it three times a day, and when she took the second one, then she started getting kind of shaky, and I think her she got COPD. Her oxygen kind of dropped, so she's afraid to take any more of them. Okay. So we got it tore down, cleaned up. Now we'll see. Uh, let's take it over here and put it on the scale. See what we got. It says one pound fourteen ounces. Uh, one pound fourteen out fourteen point seven ounces. Okay, the bucket itself weighs about three point two, roughly. So almost one and three quarter pounds. About five dollars worth of copper out of that motor. That's not too shabby. Yeah, not gonna get rich, but it all adds up. Just do about a hundred more of those and be all right. So hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave comments. A lot of your comments give me inspiration. Yeah inspire me to keep going keep making videos sometimes it can get tiring trying to do videos as well you don't mind getting up scrapping but it doesn't matter if it's a good video anyway i'm just starting to rattle we'll see you guys in the next video take care and happy scrapping bye bye